Hello and welcome to another episode of the Paper Stack Podcast. I am Brett Berkey and this is Rick Allen. Yes, that's me. We're back. I'm back. Back in effect. So, uh, just wanted to uh, start off by saying uh, if you have not got your tickets yet for either DME or Node Expo, uh, there'll be links in the, the description below. We do have promo codes that we can offer you. Uh, the DME is going to be on September 30th and October 1st, and it's going to be in St. Pete. Nailed it. <laughs> No to expos in November sometime. <laughs> Good. November 4th and 5th in Dallas. <laughs> it's usually always it's in actually the in Grapevine, I believe. Is it? Yeah. I believe it's right there. It's always on my wife's birthday. Because it's like, <laughs> she's like, can you, why always on my birthday? I'm like, sure, let me just talk to them and see if they can move it. For you <laughs> hunters out there, it's also, it's always during the rut, which is kind of tough. Uh, What's the rut? Uh, that's when the deer are running around like. It's, it's it's a it's a big part of hunting season. It's hmm. like the Super Bowl of hunting. Oh wow! Okay, yeah, it's like important. Anyways, um, yeah. So check out those events. I'm really excited. I'll be speaking at Node Expo, talking about building your online presence and uh, social media. The power of oh really? Yeah, that's what we imagine that. Huh. That's what we'll be talking about. So that's great. Um, I might might have another one there. Um, we'll have a booth at. Both events, both events, DME and Node Expo. So stop by the booth, show you what's going on. Hopefully we'll have some new stuff that's being released. Oh, yeah. Working on it. It's just been uh it's been fun. It's been interesting, as Mike would say. It's been interesting. So interesting. we got a lot of stuff yeah, going on. Um, we're almost done. Almost done. So, anyways, what do we have going on today, Brett? What's the uh so the soup du jour? <laughs> soup du jour. It's the soup so, of the day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll try that. <laughs> So what we have today is something that happens quite often um, on PaperStack. People, you know, that we a lot of people are new, and so they do a transaction and they get to the end and you, they, they're like, "What's next?" I had something with someone recently where the seller's like, "Hey," and came back with the transaction. You never recorded this. The their county is reaching out to me. You got to get these recorded. Mm -hmm. And the buyer's like, "Recorded." With who? Which, I was like, whoa. And it was like six months before, prior that they closed and they hadn't had it recorded. And it's like, wow. So, you know, we set up some emails to go out that are like, like people need to get this, this, this at the end of their, their transaction. That should be live sometime soon. Uh, it's on Mike's plate right now. Um, but yeah, you know, I just wanted to make sure there's a video about it because, you know, it's, it's one of those things where people close a deal and they get the collateral file and they'll say, where's the assignment? Where's your lunch? And it's like, those are digital documents. They're on the platform. Sometimes, sometimes there are wedding documents. Sometimes, if they ask in advance, usually we say, you know, if you're going to have wedding, ask prior to the uh, the collateral files sent to the auditor. We'll open that up so they can have it. Put it in the same file with the collateral file. They send it to you. You get to see the digital documents of those. You'll see it on the timeline anyhow. But you'll be able to see that as soon as you get it. You have that as uh, uh, along with the collateral file. So some of those things, you know, the things that we're thinking. What are the most important things? They some people don't have a servicer, so they're they're wondering what happens at the end. And it's like, well, you know, there's gonna be a servicing transfer request. So there's a number of different steps. We just wanted to kind of detail the things that PaperStack does um, and the things maybe we don't do that at the end of a transaction, if this is your first time, uh, you, you wanna follow these steps. We're trying to help as much as we can after the process, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, we just wanna make sure there's this out there. So if you are watching and you have not bought a note yet, but are listening, you can remember this when you go through the system, oh yeah, you know, I need to go back and listen to that one and see what they said. Yep. So I guess we can just walk down the list of things we do. Yeah, and, and so we may miss stuff. You may have internal um, processes that you follow. So, you know, I'm sure we'll hear it in the comments. If we miss something, please let us know if we miss something. But in no particular order, first thing you want to do is you want to download the collateral file, right? Mm -hmm. You want to get that, the collateral file, so you've got a digital copy of it um, in case anything should happen. Of course, we store everything on PaperStack. So if you lose your digital copy, you can come back, but I always just start by downloading um, one zip file because it's got all the files I need in there, right? It's got my transfer documents, it's got the um, audit report, everything that needs to be. Is that on the file set though? I don't mm. think so. The file. So in the audit report, you're able to download the collateral file. We just came up with something that should be in the files tab. That should be in the files. It tab. It should be in the files tab. So that, that be, will be coming to the files tab near you <laughs> very quickly. But um, I'll also download the collateral report if it's on. If I, if you know, I have an audit on there. You just want to do that. First thing is get the yeah. collateral file. But most importantly, you want to get the transfer documents if it's digital, 
right? Mm -hmm. And once I have the transfer documents, you said it, we got to go record them. Mm -hmm. If I'm not recording them, I'm sending them to somebody to make sure they get recorded. And we have partners that can do that. So um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you actually have to have the licensing to actually go and it's either have to be done by like some kind of authorized. Yeah, or something. if like, you're gonna do it digitally, there's some digital. You gotta have a an account with like Simply File, or you typically have to be a, a um, title company or a law firm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can maybe get those done. We have one, but um, oh man, get late in the day. Um, so the other things that we uh, that are important. So these files you'll see will be on the files tab of the transaction. Mm -hmm. And there is a little button that says download all files. And then what's it, what will happen then is we'll zip it up, download the zip, keep that for your records wherever you want. But please note that uh, indefinitely these files will be stored there. So if you don't want to have them on your desktop, just know that we always have access to them and you can always find them in your completed files or completed transactions. Right. Second thing that will happen at the end of the, the, the transaction is that you should have put in a servicer in the closing. And you know, if it's if you're new, you will have some things that need to be done with a servicer. But uh, you know, we know all the ones probably out there that you, you want to talk to. So if you're new and you have not set up everything, you don't know who to talk to, just reach out to Hello at Paperstack, and we'll initiate an email. But at the end, we do a servicing transfer, which will show the cutoff date, the close date, the buyer's email address, the seller's email address, and the transferring servicers. Servicers love it because they get this information. They don't have to wonder, you know, who sold it, whatever. Um, and that's something we kick off. Just make sure that once that happens, you start the uh, process with your, your servicer to know, hey, this is what I need to do. Yeah, uh, pick it up. That's like one of the next things on my list was, even though we do kick off the servicing transfer, follow up with your servicer. Say, hey, just want to make sure this is getting transferred. Because uh, sometimes emails get missed or sometimes they're waiting on something. Maybe they sent you an email and it got missed. So, Or what can happen as well is that the seller was seller financed and... Uh, you know, is doing servicing themselves or something like that, and they might not be sending this stuff. So just make sure that they're all, you got You got all this data, you will get an email at the closing with that same information, but also note all that same information, it's gonna be on the metadata tab. The tab never checked, but uh, all that mm -hmm. stuff is there. So it's gonna show you uh, where the, the collateral file is coming, which is whatever you put as an address. Um, the servicer for both buyer and seller, buyer and seller's vesting information, which will have their phone number and email, so that if you need to contact them per, uh, further, maybe something six months down the road, you're like, oh my gosh, you need to talk to this guy or mm -hmm. girl, and you're like, I don't have their name or email. First, if you just write in the transaction, they're gonna get an email. So if you wanna just do that and have a still the same paper trail, that's always beneficial. We always suggest that. Mm -hmm. so, that you, so you don't have everything here, and then you go off, and then you're trying to find out where you set it. You have everything there, you know, you're, you're just, so it's you just don't easier. go off on tangents. <laughs> What's a tangent? What's a tangent exactly? <laughs> that, was, that wasn't a tangent. That was all. That was very inf informational. Yeah, no, that was good. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> I was pretty much it. No, oh, I, I was. Okay. I was pretty much done at that hey, point. Hey, one more thing that I uh, wanted to talk about on the, the <laughs> downloading the files is if you did get a wedding document, make sure you're keeping track of those assignments and allonges making their way to you. I know a lot of times that. Um, sellers might get those on their desk and they get buried in pieces of paper. So we will be sending you the collateral file from the auditor. Make sure that you're also, there might be a separate file or a separate shipment coming in. Make sure you're getting that shipment from the seller with the um, with the transfer documents. That's important. It is. Sometimes those get missed. A lot of times you can just say, hey, when you, when you are starting to send this, just put the tracking number on the timeline. That's, that's the easiest thing. So you at least know when it's coming. Yep. Um, something else uh, important is insurance. You know, if you have, uh, if it's a non-performing loan, you want to make sure that you're getting your FPI, force place insurance set up. If there's no insurance in place, that's something that's super important that I would do. I would actually probably have that set up prior to closing, but sometimes people forget. So you want to make sure that when it's transferred, you have insurance in place. Um, going on the NPL um, sort of bandwagon or, or the path here look for uh, make sure you notify attorneys whenever you whenever you buy a loan um, you know you want to get the contact information for if there's a foreclosure started who, who which attorneys handling the, the foreclosure smart so that way you can reach out to them or have your servicer reach out to them and say hey uh, we just purchased this loan give me an update like where are we 
and, then, and they're gonna want you to sign an engagement letter. You wanna keep things moving along. What you don't want to happen is have the loan sold and for some reason they decide to dismiss it or something. That just doesn't happen. Usually the attorney will reach out to you, but I like to be proactive and get their name and number so I can, you know, let's, let's keep momentum going. And sometimes you're picking it up and you're saying, hey, I don't know how quickly or slowly you've been moving as a result of who I purchased this from, but I'm gonna be moving quickly. So if you need something and you kind of set the tone with those attorneys and, you know, I usually have a kickoff call or if it's a, if it's a firm that I don't know and it's in an area where I've, you know, in a state, like if it's in Florida, I've got my guy in Florida. Uh, we work well together. He gets things done quickly. Uh, it's, you know, so I may move, I may say, hey, you know, thanks. Send out the final bill over to the seller. Um, we're transferring this over to this and then we're going to have to do substitution of party plaintiff and substitution of the So you do, do you do that a lot with the different states? We have a good, your attorney, do you transfer it over? Sure. We've got, you know, because once, I don't do as many foreclosures now, but back in the day mm -hmm. uh, when we were doing um, a lot of foreclosures, I had my, I had my guys that were streamlined. And, and so what will happen is, you know, Prior to this, and this is good information for those of you who are, who are potentially buying notes, we may have a big influx of inventory coming shortly, but of uh, delinquent loans, that the there was foreclosure mills, right? And so oh, yeah. they would, you know, you would not necessarily get somebody in there who was hitting every deadline mm -hmm. or hitting every sort of like, okay, this opened up, I can file this motion now. It was things were, you know, kind of just moving along. They were just on a conveyor belt. And some of the good attorneys, they don't they don't work on it. You know, it's like you'd be at the airport, right? You've got the people who are standing on the conveyor belt that are just walking you along, mm -hmm. the people mover, and then you have the people walking on the yeah. people mover. Those people are getting somewhere a lot faster. Yeah. A good attorney is like somebody at the airport who's walking on the people mover. Yeah. You're like, they look like they're sprinting. Feel mm -hmm. like you're sprinting too if you ever do it, um, cool. but it, it makes it makes all the difference in the world. It gets things done 20, 30 percent quicker. Mm -hmm. So I would yes, I would if I have an attorney that's great and they're quick and they're moving things along, that's who I go with. Versus burning up six months with a firm to find out that they're not good. I've done that too. Yeah, that sucks. Six yes, months. it does suck. It does. And then oh, you I'm not doubting it. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, follow up with the servicer. We talked about that. Notifying the attorney. Insurance is good. Um, review the final payment history on the servicing file. Servicers are really good about f catching that, you know, maybe money was paid during the interim servicer by the borrower and it was after the cutoff date. You want to go ahead and check and see what happened on that payment history to see if you're entitled to any money. Um, oftentimes what will happen is, uh, it'll go unnoticed by the outgoing servicer. They may pay it to the seller. You might have to call the seller up and say, hey, that, that money was mine. You owe me that money or something like that. So hmm. I would always check the final payment history on uh, the, uh, the servicer when it gets inboarded or onboarded. I'd also check the, you know, some of the common things like the address and the borrower name. I've seen a couple times when the borrower name is misspelled or the address is misspelled. Um, and you just want to make sure all that stuff is is corrected in the uh, in there, and then finally, go ahead. Where would the borrower's names be misspelled? Sometimes, whenever they're you know, they might write Allen and spell it A L L A N, or they might write A L L N and forget the E. So there's just like just a typo. Oh, but I'm saying, so you, we're not saying, so I was going to say if it was on the assignment of mortgage, there is a step where they put. The oh, you know, I was, I was, I'm more so speaking about in the. Uh, in the servicing platform once it's been onboarded. Check there for some. But they should always be checking on the, so the seller has to enter this data in yeah. and definitely check when you're signing a disbursement, or no, actually it's. Yeah, that's, that's you know, important. that's a whole nother, a whole nother topic, but there's as a, <laughs> as a. But, I know. <laughs> no, it's a whole nother thing, but it's a good thing to bring up, you know, as a buyer on paper stack, I would want to dedicate a whole snackable to this. like. It's not just the job of the of the seller to go in there and put out the the assignment of mortgage. And by the way, I know it looks like PaperStack generates the assignment of mortgage. It's the seller entering in all that data. So there's going to be mistakes, right? Uh, some of the stuff you need to look for is the borrower name. Is it 
Brett Berkey and Rick Allen, husband and wife? Is that how it reads on the mortgage? Or is it, you know, Brett, because sometimes you'll see the assignment, it'll say Brett Berkey and Rick Allen. And it won't say, it won't have whatever our, the title is. You need to make sure that the vesting of the borrowers match. So that's something that you can do as a buyer mm -hmm. as just like, look, keep it streamlined. Because the last thing you want is to go try to, or you go record something and there's a misspelling in the assignments. And you know what happens when there's misspellings in the assignments? Mm -hmm. And well, if it gets to, if you have to go to court, Oh yeah. And they're like, well, this is not a valid assignment. Why? Well, because the vesting profile doesn't match or something along those lines or Booker page or any number of things. So those are, yeah, those are, that's a whole nother kind of topic, but there's stuff you can be doing as a buyer on the platform. Checking, we put everything out in a draft mode. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is so you can go in there and check it and make sure everything's good. It's much easier to correct stuff prior to closing or prior to being closed out in paper stack than post closing. Once it's post closing, it, it, it stuff starts falling outside the platform. It, it becomes more difficult. It's just, it's easier to handle it right away. Yeah, it's easy to But we do fight like hell to get those things changed when it, when, when it happens. Yeah. We've been 100% yeah. successful almost. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so we're so, pretty good. Uh, the last thing I say is open up your internal files. I know uh, it's not always just, that, you know, everybody's got their internal sort of processes. And I mentioned at the beginning, but that's where, you know, right after you close something, make sure you're opening your internal processes, whether it's your accounting spreadsheets or uploading it into QuickBooks and it's got its own little project number or anything like that. And just kind of, you know, and if you don't have those things, you're probably going, well, I don't have that. What does that mean? Well, you probably haven't been in the business that long. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You'll figure out there's certain things you need to do, like having, you know, some internal processes to make your business work. And lastly, something that happened recently that was like, <laughs> that's, it's, it was strange. The buyer reached out to us and he said, hey, I didn't receive the collateral file. And we're like, okay. And we looked and I can't remember where it was supposed to go, but um, I don't remember if it ever shipped or something, or no, he never got, oh no, he like never got it, and, or he, he it somehow didn't leave it during COVID. It was, it was a whole year that passed. It ended up being in a- Oh, this is the one that just recently happened? Yeah. yeah. The buyer, um, so the buyer was locked down in COVID. He had a mailing, um, somebody that accepted his mail. That's like what it was. Mailboxes Plus or something like that. And he went there and he um, he called us and said, hey, I'm missing the the original collateral file. All that was in there was a shipping label was in the file. So that's right. It was one of those things. I'm like, well, let me look at the transaction. I was like, well, this is, you know, it was actually more than a year. I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is like, 16 months old, man. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. He's like, well, I've, you know, kind of been locked down and this and that. And the, I have somebody collecting my mail. And so, yeah. you know, just make sure you, you look at, open it up. Once get, you yeah, get, it. get your collateral file and, and go through it because <laughs> look, mistakes are going to happen. There's sometimes you get a collateral file and it could have been the wrong collateral file. That's happened to me before. Really? Yeah. Or what's well, happened in, you know, at, at the auditor, somebody sends in the wrong collateral file. Mm. So, um, yeah, there's all kinds of things. You just want to check and, you know, when the documents come in, you want to check to make sure everything's there. Hey, if there was an original note in the collateral audit, there should be an original note when you get the collateral file. Um, you know, one thing that you also want to check for is look at the FedEx envelope. I, I can't tell you how many times FedEx envelopes show at the show up at the auditor, mm -hmm. and there is they're opened already. They've are like the glue has broken off of them, or we we shipped out a collateral file from California to our admin. Oh, that's yeah. And the file um, showed up, and the box was taped up and everything like that. But when you open the open the box, so, like it had clearly uh, exploded, and FedEx put it back together. Like and, Humpty and, Dumpty, though. Yeah, but they just threw everything into the... They literally just took everything and threw it into a box. We ended up losing three files, three collateral files. And so, yeah, you just want to make sure that, um, you know, you check and verify everything's there in the collateral. Because if not, you got to start immediately, not 14 or 16 months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. I mean, so those are all the, the spots that you need to watch for post-closing. Yeah, just those During closing, we got you. Afterwards, we try to get you still, but you know, like there's, there are a lot of moving spots, you mm -hmm. know, that can, can be gotchas. So, well, that was good. That went a little long, but you know, yeah, it's, it's not it really good. snackable there.
Nope, not, but so. But uh, that's how we'll handle it. It's a podcast. Yeah, if there's now. something else that we missed, leave it in the bottom and we'll do a follow up to this one, just like we did a follow up to the servicing one. We'll it's happy good. to talk about other things and more stuff might come to our mind. And we'll do, you know, if we do a follow up one, it'll probably be a little, little bit more structured. And you know, what I have gotten a lot of people points. asking for like a couple of times that we need to dive deeper into next time is MPL information. How do you, how do you, how do you do that more? You know, we've had like two people ask. Do, do more mean? stuff on non-performing notes. Okay. We can talk non-performing. Mm -hmm. We can get into a whole series. That's that for this week. We'll have to see you on the next one. So uh, enjoy your week, and we'll see you soon.